Welcome to this video tour of the Whaling Brig Cape Cory. I'm Tom Lauria, and I built this 1 to 48 scale model over a three year period between 2010 and 2013. It took about 3,000 hours to construct, exclusive of the research. This is a Class A scratch built model, as described in the Mystic Seaport publication, Ship Model Classification Guidelines. Now, with the introductions out of the way, let's get to the fun stuff. Kate Corey was built in Westport, Massachusetts for Alexander Corey, a successful businessman of that town. He owned a dry goods store and had a couple of other interests as well, one of which was whaling. In 1856, he commissioned the shipyard of Allen and Sisson conveniently located right behind the Cory store. By the way, that's the Cory store that you see in the right middle ground of that painting. Anyhow, he commissioned the yard to build a small schooner specifically for the whaling trade. It was to be named for his five-year-old daughter, Kate. For the first two years, Kate Cory was moderately successful and there were no great dramas associated with any of her voyages but it was clear that the schooner rig did not create a stable platform for processing her harvest. So, in 1858, it was decided that she be re-rigged as a brig in the hope that the addition of the square sails would help stabilize her in a rolling sea. That's uh, not a bad goal to have when you consider that there could be hundreds of gallons of hot whale oil sloshing around in the tripods and on the deck and just mere feet from a barely contained fire in the triworks. From that point on, Kate Corey carried out her trade as a brig and it seems to have worked. As before, little drama and modest success seemed to be the hallmarks of the ship. With the outbreak of the Civil War in 1861, things changed. Without whale oil, nothing much moved, and hundreds of Yankee whalers were captured or burned by the Confederate Navy. Their crews brought aboard the capturing vessel and then unceremoniously dropped off at any handy port to find their own way back to the States. In April of 1863, this was the fate of the Kate Corey. Captain Sims and the crew of the Confederate raider Alabama captured her off the coast of Brazil, along with two other whalers out of New Bedford. She was almost saved from destruction when it was thought that she was needed to transport the men from these other whalers to the Brazilian port of Pernambuco. But when a schooner bound for that port showed up and agreed to take the men, all three Yankee ships were destroyed, including the Cape Corey, which burned to the waterline with 244 barrels of oil in her hold. There were no plans for the vessel, but it was very close in size, design, and specifications to the bark Matapoiset, built in the nearby town of Rochester, Massachusetts in 1836. There are portions of the original contract for Kate Corey in the possession of the New Bedford Whaling Museum, and it gives details for many of the major features of the ship. From there, other aspects of the construction can be deducted from following the building practices of the day for that type of a ship. Fortunately, there's enough of that type of information around, and one can be fairly confident of not going too far off the mark if you stick to the known facts. Another rich source of material came from the Corey family itself. Kate Corey's descendants still live in Westport, and the dry goods store is still there too. Here it is in its current incarnation as a bed and breakfast. In the attic of the family home were many documents having to do with the ship, including invoices for the materials used during the build and outfit. A picture of the whaler begins to emerge, and in 1970, 
Eric A. R. Ronberg, Jr., then curator of the New Bedford Whaling Museum, undertook the project of visually reconstructing Kate Corey. The result was 10 sheets of plans illustrating the vessel as both a schooner and a brig. There is extensive information on framing, planking, and coppering the hull, as well as specifications for the sizes and types of rigging hardware used on board. In more than 22 pages of notes, Mr. Ronberg gives very specific information on the sizes and types of rope used for the rigging and how each line should be treated. Now, I'm not sure if this was information that he gained directly from the Corey family documents or from his own prodigious knowledge on the subject. Either way, he has painted a very comprehensive picture of Kate Corey. I have done my best to be as faithful to that knowledge as my skills will allow. Now before we wander around the model undisturbed, I'd like to point out a few details you may want to take special note of. Some will be obvious and some a bit more subtle. Let's start with whale boats. Now this is a subject that can take up volumes, but here I will limit it to saying that of the four boats on the ship, three were actively used and the fourth one was a spare. That's the one that's hanging over the stern. The three active boats are completely fitted out with all the gear needed to carry out their job. Decking. Because a whale ship's main deck had to withstand heavy abuse, the actual deck was covered by a 1 by 12 pine sheathing that, if that got damaged, could easily be replaced. In this shot, you'll notice that the planks of the quarter deck are half the width of those you see on the main deck. You may also notice that while the main deck sheathing follows the center line of the ship, the quarter deck planks follow the outside shape of the hull and all the seams and butts are caulked. Standing rigging. Mr. Ronberg's plans and notes give very specific details about this and I chose to follow them. For instance, the forwardmost shroud on the foremast is served for its entire length, while the shrouds aft of it are only served enough to turn in the dead eyes. And if you're not familiar with that term, this illustration should help. In the case of the mainmast, it's just the opposite. It's the aftmost shroud that gets the serving, and all the ones forward of it are only served enough to turn in the dead eyes. Now, here's an example of a piece of wire rigging being served. And with that, it's time to let Kate speak for herself. I'll be back later.
Well, I hope you enjoyed this closer look at Kate Corey. If you have any questions about this model, you can contact me through my website's contact page. That is tjlauria.com forward slash contact forward slash. I hope I hear from you soon. Thanks for watching.